Um, well, first of all, um, on behalf of SUNY OER Services, I'm welcoming everyone to our brief webinar today on Waymaker for Psychology. Uh, I'm Michelle Beachy, and I am joined today by Jameson Miller with Lumen Learning. Uh, welcome to everyone. Welcome so everyone. first we're going to just um, provide a brief overview of SUNY OER Services and the partnership that SUNY has with Lumen Learning. And then we'll move on to a live demonstration of uh, the Waymaker for Psychology. And we'll leave some time for questions. Um, I can't see the chat, so we have a small enough group. If you wanna just jump in, if you have any questions as we go along, we'd be happy to address them, or if you wanna save them for the end um, as well, we'll get to those. So um, over the last two years, over uh, 155,000 SUNY students and 1,000 SUNY faculty have embraced the freedom and power of OER. SUNY OER Services is building on that momentum, but we can't scale and sustain OER across SUNY alone, and we need partners for that. So Lumen is a leader in OER and a natural partner for SUNY given its experience, expertise, and leadership in open education. Together, we help campuses remove barriers, offer affordable and easy to access adaptable open course materials. And Lumen Learning's vision is to enable unprecedented learning for all students and impact affordability, access, and student outcomes through effective adoption of open educational resources at scale. And this aligns with SUNY's mission to offer the people of New York educational services of the highest quality with the broadest possible access. Uh, Lumen Learning is a partner that listens to the needs of SUNY faculty, responds to the latest educational technological capabilities, and incorporates OER into those technologies and uses data to improve OER efforts. Lumen's OER courses and platforms are available to all SUNY faculty and students at no charge through this system level partnership. SUNY OER services and the SUNY Help Desk provide direct support for faculty and students using Lumen's platforms and OER courses. It's as simple as sending an email to the SUNY Help Desk and we can coordinate with Lumen, um, with SUNY OER services and um, get you the support that you need. So together, we're intensely focused on ensuring data-driven, high-quality OER is available to SUNY students on day one, that the resources are offered at an affordable cost, and in SUNY's case, that cost is free. Can't get more affordable than that. Um, but the most important goal is that we are improving student success. So we have our SUNY uh, ready to adopt OER course catalog, which you can find at oer.suny.edu. And you find peer reviewed course materials and ancillary teaching resources for over 70 subjects, all of which are available at no cost to SUNY students. Um, and I just quickly click in, I'm sure Jameson's going to go into a little more of how to find things, but um, for the catalog, you have the subjects at the top that you can choose from. You can search by a keyword in the search bar, um, or you can scroll through the courses that are available here, and they do show you which platforms they're available in. Um, and with that, I will turn the controls over to Jameson for a demonstration of Waymaker, um, which is courseware that combines OER with personalized learning tools and analytics to strengthen student learning and success. So, Jameson, take it away. Thanks, Michelle. That was a very good intro. And yeah, the, the SUNY catalog is uh, an excellent way for uh, SUNY faculty to find courses. But Nandini, um, you can also go to lumenlearning.com. Um, and on our main website, in the upper right-hand corner, there's a yellow button you can press um, that gets you to a very similar catalog of all the <laughs> publicly available courses. Um, and from those catalogs, you can dive right in and see uh, all of the content because, of course, all of our courses are OER, so there's, there's nothing like a, a paywall or, or any kind of a barrier to actually looking at the content. So you can kind of take a closer look um, at what I'm going to show you today. You can see the entire Intro to Psychology course um, and see how good of a fit uh, it might be for your teaching. 
So let me share my screen. Uh, Laura Murray, who's uh, also with us uh, today, um, who's also a director of teaching and learning here at Lumen, but she focuses on supporting SUNY faculty and staff, um, has preloaded a, a demo Waymaker course into SUNY's uh, main Blackboard instance. So we're going to look at the intro to site course in Blackboard today, although um, we also support all the major LMSs, Moodle, Canvas, D2L, um, and so forth. Um, so when you decide to adopt or even just take a closer look at uh, one of Lumen's courses, um, what we would do is send you a course cartridge that you can import into a blank course shell in your LMS. And the first time you import, it's going to look just like this uh, on the screen. It comes in with all these folders in place. Um, that are in your LMS natively and it connects to the gradebook automatically. So um, everything's kind of set up. Um, this is the, the, the starter um, organization of the course. You'll see at the top, there's these three grayed out folders in Introduction to Psychology. And these are visible just to the instructors uh, in the course, uh, not to the, the students. And so we've got a summary of uh, the course, you know, the learning objectives and how it's organized. Um, we have quite a few faculty resources. This is, of course, one of the things that Lumen is trying to lower the barriers to adopting OER by making it easier. So we're including things like some recommendations on pacing. You know, we've got 16 modules in this course, but if you don't have a 16-week uh, course to uh, or semester to to lay things out, we we talk about where you can condense things, modules that um, uh, make sense to either do together um, or to to skip. Um, we've got a PDF of the whole course, so if students want to access the content offline um, or they, some students still prefer to actually have a print copy of something, they can of course do that with a PDF. Some PowerPoints to help you with your lecturing. Um, uh, a summary of the assignments and discussions that are included with this course, um, which is one of the things I want to highlight today, um, and I'll show you some of those. We've got question banks, so you can import these questions into your LMS's uh, assessment tool if you wanted to make your own midterm or final exams. Um, and then some links out to some additional resources even beyond these and where you can get help from Lumen. So those are some of the goodies that come to the, the faculty and I'll, I'll come back to those a little bit too because there's some great analytics there. Now in the intro to psychology, uh, we've got a pretty robust set of assignments, uh, one for each of the modules and we don't recommend using all of them. Um, and that's why we've collected them in a separate folder here to the side. Now, when these assignments come in, they are native LMS assignments. So these are ones that you can edit uh, to your heart's content, um, open them up, change the, the verbiage. Uh, we include rubrics um, for you and for your students to see how they'll be marked. Um, but the point value and um, whether or not you, you decide to assign them is completely up to you. Uh, they're just uh, in here and there's some of them are quite robust and we'll give you some tips uh, in here as well in the faculty resources like this might be an assignment that you want to give at least you know a couple weeks notice where it's going to ask students like we have students taking dream logs uh, in one of the assignments you know the idea that they can start to understand their their dream states um, and different different aspects like that so quite a few assignments and then if you did decide to use them you've could of course move them out of this this folder and into the appropriate chapter uh, wherever you want to introduce it into the course. So any of the tools that are available to you that you're used to using in your LMS completely function well with Waymaker. It's not going to break anything. You can rename folders. You can change the order. Like if you decide, you know, you want to start out with research before you get into foundations, you can just drag them around, um, uh, move things, um, and then. Inside each of the folders, they're all set up about the same. Uh, so for instance, I'm going to come into our first one, Psychological Foundations. And inside each of these, you're always going to see a study plan. Um, and in this particular course, we also have discussion boards with each of the, the modules. And then uh, a quiz at the end. So it'll be a similar setup, you know, and it's at this point too, like, if you have a particular set of content or perhaps like a research article at your library, anything that you like to use or want to bring into the course, you can of course just bring it right in here. Um, you can add it uh, in addition to what's in here. But the study plan is basically like the, the textbook part or this is where the content is for the, the students. So when I click into one of the study plans, this is what it looks like. So we have 
three sections. The first one is a get started section, then dive in. This is where you know the core of the content is, and then a finish strong, which is kind of summarizes things and links students back out to the quiz. So we have a first like a why it matters module. This gives the students some context. You know why do we bother to study psychology? How is it relevant to your life? Um, and then they can take a pre-quiz. Um, and this one, there's no point value associated with it, but it's just to kind of check in with students. You know, we don't assume that they're coming in as just empty vessels, right, for us to pour knowledge into. They've likely heard of some of these concepts in psychology. And this gives them a chance to kind of demonstrate some of that knowledge. And after they take that pre-quiz, um, I'm gonna highlight uh, down here. I can turn things on. Do you see how the, these tiles were gray at the bottom, these little sections? And now uh, after they take the pre-quiz, um, so with the sample student data that we've gotten here, this student is actually on track with several of these things. Like they've actually heard of some of the concepts in history of psychology, contemporary fields. So they've actually got a pretty good grasp on this one. Um, the idea being that as students, uh, this gives them some kind of a hint. It kind of reveals the text to them where they should uh, concentrate their efforts and where they should be studying. So if one of these was saying like need to work, that's where they might want to come into the content and start clicking through and around. I can give you a, a preview of what some of the basic content looks like. On this page, here we go. We go way back, looks like to the Greeks, Plato and Aristotle. Um, here's the basic learning objectives for this chapter, nice and short. Um, here I'm gonna define psychology. So here I have some text. Now the other thing as well is whenever possible, we try to add these uh, little try it activities or areas where students can actually apply things that they are just learning. Um, learning engineering and learning science tells us that retention and learning is greatly assisted by giving you something that you can actually do when you're um, introduced to a new topic, as well as giving you immediate feedback on, on how you did on things. So whenever possible, we bring those in. We also have a, a glossary throughout this, uh, this course to highlight important words for students for them to study. At any point, if they're like, okay, I'm, I'm feeling good about this, they can pop back out to the study plan or continue on through. And as they go through and do the interactives and all these things, it would then update these tiles uh, to give them more um, feedback on how they're doing. Same thing goes uh, when they decide that they're ready for the quiz for the, the chapter, they would click on the, the ready for the quiz that would take them to the assessment and they're allowed to take that quiz twice by default. And the idea being that after they take it the first time, they'll get their score and the study plan would update and it would actually show them that, ooh, if you only scored say like a 70% a on, on your first attempt, it would actually direct the student, here you can see where it says needs work, direct the students where they need to focus their studying to take the quiz a second time, hopefully improve their score. And whatever score is higher is the one that will be pushed to the grade book in your LMS. Um, so that's a highlight of, of the interactivity, the way these study plans work, this personalized learning that Michelle was mentioning before that uses some analytics to kind of help the student along. Um, we never change what content is available to the student. Um, we, we do believe that it's up to them to, to decide where, where to study, but we're just trying to help them be better students and uh, more effective studiers by giving them some of this feedback. Now, part of the reason that we are holding this webinar is because um, late last fall, we released uh, some pretty um, significant updates to this Introduction to Psychology course. So we've gone through and we've updated examples, um, used more relevant technology examples, um, like referring to uh, Alexa and things like that, um, and artificial intelligence. And we've also made sure that every module now has what we call a psych in real life example. And this is where, when we're discussing the um, experiments or experimental design in psychology, we have one of those modules in the study plan that's dedicated to really digging in um, and having quite rigorous actually interactivity with one of those uh, concepts. So it's something I'd love to, to show you what it looks like. Um, so one of those, uh, the newer ones, is in our thinking and intelligence module. I'm gonna come in and we'll see again, this looks just like it did in the other module. We've got the get started, dive in. This one has three sections. And then thinking and problem solving. Here's my psych in real life choice blindness. Um, so this is kind of picking up on a, a famous experimental design around our biases around choice. And uh, we feel like we're autonomous in making choices, but in actuality, um, 
context shapes a lot of those those choices for us. So it starts off with this interaction, like, hey, um, and, and what's mimicking the experiment design that this uh, is based off of? Um, just pick one of these faces. Which one is more attractive? And we urge students to think, you know, not just think about like this doesn't have to be a romantic or, or a sexually based uh, attraction. Just you know, what's your first reaction to who's more attractive? And so I could pick one, and then it says, okay, we'll also show you a male. And I'm going to pick one, and then it says, let's do it, you know, for a couple more sets of pictures. And I pick these, and then I'll, I'm supposed to go through and uh, explain why I think through again this kind of metacognition here, like think why did I choose uh, this particular image? And uh, I'll give it some feedback. Um, oh, smirk, okay, uh, I click next. That's a nice interactive example of thinking about what we're doing. Again, I liked your smile. Um, this guy, he's got a haircut, I'm jealous. <laughs> and then I click next. And actually, it's gonna give me some feedback. Did you notice something strange? That actually, it showed me one of the pictures that I didn't choose. And yet, I still explained why I chose that image over the other. So it's supposed to, oh, okay, give me a chance to think through that. And then it explains this. It gives us a video to show us more about the experiment design. Um, some of the uh, uh, highlighted uh, study design on replication. And then um, here's some different cases. And it gives us a chance to, again, try things, get, uh, get an answer back. It's going to tell me why I was incorrect or if I am correct. Um, and uh, here we have another video of uh, looking at the uh, experiment design, more trying things, similar to similar faces. So it's quite rigorous. This could form an entire um, course uh, activity if you wanted to do this in class altogether. It could be kind of like an activity. We also give students a chance to kind of predict experiment results and think quantitatively a little bit, like what's going to happen uh, with these kind of designs? How are things going to be shaped up? And then uh, I can actually see what most people choose. Oh, this is why most people would change that graph. And then I can actually see the real results from the study. Oh, it wasn't as dramatic of an increase as, uh, as I predicted. Um, and I'm, I'm rushing through, but um, these, again, are all things that are available for you to, to, to view uh, through the, the SUNY catalog or from our public catalog. You can uh, go right into the course and see this. It won't be organized within the study plan, but all the content uh, is published out there, there publicly. Hey, Jameson, this is Laura. Just wanted to jump in and let everybody know that um, you can start uh, putting your questions into chat because I can manage the chat for yeah. um, Jameson when we get to the Q&A section. So I just wanted to let everybody know they can start um, popping their questions in there so we can rip through them at the end. Yeah. Um, so we have one of those psych and real life examples um, with each of the chapters now. Um, and that's a particularly robust one, um, but they all are kind of have lots of that interactivity, lots of ways to, to work through the, the content. Um, and uh, I have several other examples that I could, I could bring up um, and I'm happy to go into those. Um, but at this point, um, does anyone have a question that we can address right off the, the bat? Let's see. Bill's entered a, a hi, pal. Hi back at you, Bill. And uh, for the others who don't know, Bill has actually been working with our first iteration of our psychology course um, quite a bit uh, at Herkimer and done some customization of it um, and, and did a really awesome job. Um, has been impacting students with these for a long time. So unfortunately, he's just retired. So, um, um, but we still have him part time is my understanding, Bill. So. Um, if you want to give this a, a shot with some of these new activities, we'd love to see what you can do with it. All right, if no other questions are going to pop up yet, uh, and please feel free to, to say so, um, I'd love to show another example um, of new one of these psychology in real life examples. Um, one of these is based on the, the pretty widely known uh, Carol Dweck uh, study on uh, growth mindsets instead of fixed mindsets where the idea here is that no one is actually like a math person versus a, uh, an art person or something like that. We don't have these internal biases. It's actually learning is a, a, in our brains or something that can grow um, and that comes in our motivation and emotion chapter. And when I open up this one, again, here we have the, the study plan. This one has four sections in it. 
And I believe in the motivation section is this one. Yeah, it's like in real life, growth mindsets. So again, we're, we're drawn through these different thoughts on motivation and learning and growth. And so theories on motivation, we've got Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, all, the, all these topics that we would expect to see in an introduction to psychology course. And here in this it's like in real life example we have, okay, here's we're gonna explain the difference between praise um, and different kinds of praise and how they impact uh, children and, and, and students. So here's our first example. Hey, you know, your child comes home with a big, uh, with a great report card and what do you say? You're so smart or you must have worked so hard. Or, you must have worked so hard or you have some jelly on your nose, which is probably the, actually the answer that I would give my kids. Uh, but, um, the idea being that most of us would probably say you're so smart, like we, we have this built in uh, kind of assumption and biases around these. Um, but here we get to really uh, dive in. You can take uh, an eight question mindset quiz here that links out something else. We get to understand, uh, take a closer look at Mueller and Dweck's study and how it was designed. Then you can actually try things out. Uh, um, you can uh, many, many different uh, interactives here. Again, giving us the opportunity to really try out the experiment. So instead of it just being something that we're gonna passively read about um, and then regurgitate for an assessment, the idea here is it's something that the student can actually work with. And again, these are all interactives that uh, you know, we build on top of uh, the existing OER and openly license ourselves uh, and kind of send back out into the wild that we hope things grow on and continue to, to grow and change. Uh, Jameson, can I interrupt with a question? Yes, please. Um, are these subsections uh, categorized by length of time that they should take or by category? Well, I can see that they're organized by category, but is there also a time component? Um, there is some information. Let's pull back out here to the course contents. There's some information here, but not detailed into like how long uh, we estimate each one to take. So it would require you to kind of go in and, and get a sense of, of how, how you want to assign things to students. Got it. Um, the okay. psych and real life ones are far more robust than the other sections, um, but the initial cast and, and organization of the course is that each one of those sections or modules would be about a week's worth of, of work for a, a regular three credit college level course. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see if we have course contents at a glance. It might give us a little bit of information here, Nadine. So nope, this is just giving us like a, a list of the topics covered in that faculty resources folder. There's that pacing document. I wonder if that gives us a little bit of insight. So I'm hopping into the pacing. Some of the smaller modules that could be potentially combined. Okay, so this is just giving us like a, a, a very high level sense of like these modules 4, 6, 7, 10, 16 are all slightly smaller and then the largest ones here are 9, 10, and 14. So that's giving me a little bit of a sense um, to direct my assessment of the course. Um, and then here like Here's again the recommendation, like if you were going to have to offer the course in like a, a summer section or a winter section where it was only going to be uh, eight weeks, something like that, you could, um, um, how you could kind of combine things together. Given that we just have a few minutes left, um, please, uh, that, that was perfect to, to interject there. Uh, I welcome any other questions. Maybe with a few minutes left, I'll show you a little bit of the tools that you get as a faculty member as well on top of the content. So we've kind of seen the study plan and then the content, which are where the, the students are interacting with the course, but you actually get a few tools um, as an instructor in here. When I'm, so again, I'm in the faculty resources. Hey, Jameson, we just had yeah. one quick question. I was able to answer one of Marcy's questions while you were talking um, and Great. she had another though. I wanted to check in with you. Are there any short answer questions in the quiz, the graded quiz? Or uh, I believe so. Okay. Let's take a look. Let's go. Let's just pop into again the foundations, the first, and then I'm going to go ahead and pop into the quiz for the first chapter. So 
You should know too that uh, the quizzes, like the pre-quiz, uh, the little quizzes within the study plan and this final quiz are all editable. So those are things that if you decide you wanted to add some questions, Marcy, um, I'm going to go ahead and start the quiz. Um, this one is clearly multiple choice. So, going, so these are giving me multiple choice ones, but let me actually show you the I'm going to go ahead and leave, yes. I'm going to show you where we can edit the quiz and we can get a good view of what's going on in the quiz. So I'm going to go back into the study plan. And if I come down here to the quiz, do you see when I hover over any of these tiles, this little gear shows up? That shows me that there's something that I can edit and change in there. So I'm going to edit the quiz. And it's going to open up. This is the quiz editor. And so... I can edit any of the questions themselves, so I can add um, uh, another response. Um, one thing to, to note as well, you'll see that by default we have three uh, options available um, for these multiple choice questions. Um, by the end of the spring term, there will be a fourth question options actually already put in there. Our team is actually working in, uh, it just seems that people are so accustomed to having four options that those are coming in. But let's see. These are all multiple choice. If we wanted to add a new question, so do you see I have this big add question at the top? I can add it. I can select what learning outcome it's tied to, um, a sub outcome, defining psychology, and then I can ent enter a selection type. Ah, and it looks like at this point we have them all multiple, multiple choice of some kind. So it's either multiple choice where there's one correct answer, multiple choice where there's multiple correct answers, like they have to select a couple, or a drop down kind of question where they would select, you know, and that would be more akin to like a, uh, a fill in the blank short answer kind of thing, but uh, not entirely. So no, we don't have a, a short answer option on these quizzes yet. However, you can always, of course, build your own assessments uh, or use your own existing assessments um, and Blackboard to, uh, to get that. So good question, Marcy. So Jameson, just quickly, Marcy had asked if there's a, a template to add their own content in a similar format. So my answer, and feel free to expand on this, but was basically we she can move and delete study plans and title and edit questions just as you showed her. Um, and individual content, uh, new content can be added at the folder level in Blackboard, but because of the complex association of all the learning objectives to assessments and the study plans, there isn't yet a way to add your own module with all the personalized learning features wrapped around it. So yeah, yeah, precisely. <laughs> it's a multi-part answer. <laughs> Yeah, so those study plans are, are very tightly uh, organized so that, yeah, all the learning objectives are tied to quiz questions that go in. Now, you can move sections around, and it'll move those test questions with them. So if you decide to move a section from one study plan into another one in the course, you can do that, and it'll take all the questions with it. But we don't yet have, like, a, yeah, a blank study plan where you could start to, to, to build in there. Um, not yet, um, but that is definitely on the radar, um, something we'd like to be able to be able to do shortly. Great questions. Well, I think we've also uh, eaten up most of our time. So uh, I definitely want to thank everyone uh, for coming in um, this morning from 10 to 1030. Um, any questions, uh, please do feel free to reach out to Laura, um, myself, or Michelle. Um, any of us would be happy to answer questions. And of course, you can um, also get questions answered by going to either of those catalogs that we described earlier on. There's a, a contact us link uh, through any of those uh, those venues as well. And feel free also to use the OER at SUNY.edu anytime those questions go right through. We have dedicated staff at the um, SUNY Help Desk and they will direct your question to the appropriate person to get your answer to you. Okay, hey, Laura, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. What do you see as the instructor's role as this course uh, takes off? In more than just management, but what, what's the instructional role? Well, the instructional role really because, first of all, you um, have many assignments 
in there to choose from. So it's it's really taking the available assignments and aligning and picking and choosing to align them with your learning objectives. Um, and there's also, you can add additional content, as we said, around the available study plans. Um, so, and also Waymaker is used face-to-face. -face. So this isn't just for online. You can use this in a hybrid environment, but it's also used in fully face-to-face -face classes as well because, um, because it is mastery learning and um, it can be really valuable in that environment. But, but the main thing I, th I think for online would be when instructors have their own set of discussion questions or they want to have an, uh, a, a student-led discussion forum or they have their own assignments that they want to insert, that's, that's all part of it. And that somehow then easily fits in with the, uh, the grade book that is created for us? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, because when you're looking at the folder level, um, you can put any content in around any of these folders. Mm -hmm. So, and you can suppress, remove, uh, do whatever you need. The only, uh, the only place where um, you're a little more limited is when you actually go right into the study plan. But even there, you can move the tiles um, or remove the tiles. And of course, you can edit all the questions. So the instructor's role is, is the, the same as with any class. You, you would be um, manipulating the content to align it with your syllabus and learning objectives. Yeah, this is just to get you started, like any uh, any traditional text. Um, but we facilitate you uh, to, to edit and customize as you see fit. Uh, right, and then there's the value add of the automated messaging. So that really cuts down on your workload. And you can set up the messaging to be in your voice. We give you templates, but you can go in and you can customize those templates and make them very specifically Bill Pell's. And, um, but the great thing is, is that they, they're going to keep vigilant track of how all the students are doing and send out the appropriate messaging, whether of, you know, concern or praise uh, based on the grade thresholds that you set when you set up the faculty tools. I, I like the flexibility, but you know, my fear as an experienced instructional designer is somebody's going to take this as a canned, complete, program and get their students started on day one and turn in their final grades on day 45. <laughs> and well, have a conversation with those people before they get, get carried away. <laughs> <laughs> so this gives them that option. Yeah, and we want to make it possible for people who like, I mean, you can sympathize with adjunct instructors who like find out, you know, 48 hours in advance, we need you to take this section of intro psych. It's possible to get started with week one with how things are set in here and then you can, you know, customize on the fly as you need to. Um, I hear you. I've worked possible. with an awful lot of adjunct faculty who, uh, if there's a shortcut to, to take, they'll find it. <laughs> right, right. Well, anyway, thanks. You guys did a great job, and I, I appreciate the overview of uh, this new and improved course. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. I'm really yeah, glad you. you could make it. And everyone keep in mind that they could have, uh, we'd be happy to deliver one of these cartridges, and you can kind of kick the tires on this thing and, and explore it in your own LMS. I mean, there's no, no fees are uh, associated with the course at that point. So um, I don't want to run over. Marcy had one quick question. <laughs> I just started to answer. Um, so her comment is mastery learning would be 100% correct on a content quiz and are the quizzes able to be taken more than two times. So just to clarify that the quiz limit is um, twice for the graded for the graded quiz. Um, you can set the threshold yourself. Um, so I believe the default is 80% right. Um, that you get, but that can be changed because depending upon the program, sometimes it needs to be higher than that. Um, but it does not, they do not have to achieve 100%. So in other words, they get two tries on the quiz and, and that second attempt is their grade. And you can always uh, add additional attempts, you know, when a student warrants it. So yeah. if, uh, if, if there was some technical glitch or if the student really is, you know, you feel it's, it's warranted that they should have another attempt, you can grant as many attempts as you want. Uh, you just do it case by case. 
Yeah, exactly. So if something something gets they get confused, or again, if you think it merits uh, additional attempts, you have full control over that. Okay, no more questions. Thanks, Marcy. Good questions. Really appreciate them. Yep. Thank you again, everyone, for attending. And any questions? Feel free to get in touch. We'll if you think of anything afterward. Um, if you, as Jameson said, if you want to have a, a demo course for you to play in, let them know, and we can get you set up with that. Hey, thank you. Yep, I'll be in touch, yeah. Mercy. <laughs> good. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. Bye.